Whoa! Hey, hashtag field test. <laughs> is this what down country is? <laughs> Hello, I'm Henry and welcome to the Down Country Field Test. Behind me, we have the Santa Cruz Blur, and it's a name you might be familiar with if you follow World Cup XC Racing. Now, just like Canyon do with their Canyon Lux Trail, this is the Santa Cruz Blur TR, and it sees an increase in travel to 115 mil at the back to make this bike all that more capable. The Blur has been in the Santa Cruz lineup for a pretty long time. In fact, this 2022 model marks two decades of Blur. Whereas some bikes in Santa Cruz's range are all about park life, this bike, along with the Wilder from the sister brand Juliana, are all about XC girls and boys having a good time. So we've come to a big old house in the country to find out how they get on. I really hope Liam Gallagher doesn't watch this. Uh, he's probably an e-biker anyway, fuck The Blur shares a very similar silhouette to its previous version. However, there are some big changes afoot. Most notably, this bike is 289 grams lighter, and it also moves away from Santa Cruz's famed VPP system. This bike instead relies on a flex pivot in the rear end, and I imagine that's the lion's share of the weight reduction. The Blur has its foundations in XC racing, and it's not just features such as the flex pivot that point towards it. For instance, much like the Canyon Lux and Rocky Mountain Element, it also can have two water bottles inside the front triangle. The bike features fully internal cable routing as well as a very impressive insertion depth for the seat post. It also has a SRAM universal derailleur hanger to make spare parts a bit easier. The Santa Cruz Blur TR sees an increase in travel front and back back, which should make it far more capable on the descents. However, it does have relatively conservative geometry compared to some of the other bikes on this test. As previously mentioned, this bike makes use of Santa Cruz's Flex Pivot Super Light Suspension System. Now, this may surprise you, but Santa Cruz say that this system increases traction and grip for your riding, which sounds, well, it sounds pretty good. It's almost as if we've heard it before. Joking aside, what it does mean is that Santa Cruz have been quite coy and they've actually reduced the anti-squat number as well as the leverage rate. This should give more grip and lessen the chain's influence on the drivetrain to hopefully mean this bike not only pedals really well, but also grips really well. The bike uses a Fox 34 with a step cast lower as well as a DPS shock that has a 45 mil stroke. So we've loaded up the van and we've come to Pemberton to compare these bikes and find out their strong points, their weak points, and how they compare against one another. So let's get into it. All right, that's all the details of the Santa Cruz Blur TR CC. Let's get into how this bike climbs. It's the lightest on test, so I have a feeling of where this might go, but what are you leading? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, right away when you look at the bike, it looks like the lightest, it is the lightest. And then the cockpit, it's a flat handlebar. It's got the longest stem of the bunch. And I would argue some of the most traditional geometry. And when you're on the trail, this thing feels like a rock ship on the climbs. I think because of that, uh, a little quicker handling, it's very light. I found the suspension to be pretty efficient despite the efficiency test results that we're gonna to get to in a few minutes. But yeah, overall, I was very impressed with the climbing. How things go for you out there? I would absolutely agree. I think on single track, this is the best climbing bike of the bunch. It's got an amazing characteristic where it really does suck itself to the ground, almost like sort of like a coil sprung bike might do. Um, that does have the trade-off that it perhaps isn't the firmest when you stomp on the pedals. Um, but I think overall it has a really nice climbing characteristic just because of the large amounts of grip. Yeah, and I also think, as I mentioned before, that cockpit and the geometry, it puts you in a, a more traditional position where you would enjoy climbing more for those people out there that do enjoy it. I think the bike kind of lights a fire into your ass, you know? Yeah, it does seem the fore aft balance, it does seem probably, yeah, again, of all the bikes I test, the most forward, I would yeah. say, which then we'll get to in descending. But for people that have that 
sort of, they want almost like a long-legged XC bike. Capable country. Capable country sees CCC's far. God. You heard it here. You can't <laughs> Sorry, <go> everybody. <laughs> yeah. So if you write down country and I write capable country, can we write together? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah, Another reason. <laughs> <laughs> what surprised me though is this actually came the third fastest in the efficiency test. Pipped by the very down country, very <laughs> on trend, Rocky and Trek. And it's like, you know, we often talk about, you know, what metric you use to describe the bike as good a good climber. Mm -hmm. Is it lots of support or is it lots of, yes. you know, kind of get up and out of the way traction? Yes. I would say the Santa Cruz probably leans into that second category. Loads of grip. Maybe is that shock is a bit more active than some of the true down country bikes on yeah. test. Okay, forget about the freaking efficiency test. There's a cross country race tomorrow, Henry. Out of these so-called down country bikes, yeah. you're 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 gonna get the blur, right? You you're grabbing the blur. No. No. What no. bike are you getting? I would go for the, probably the top fuel. Top fuel. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I didn't get the same like <laughs> I didn't Sorry, get the same like inspire true. inspiration from that. Like when I was on the top fuel, I found the top fuel a little bit more forgiving, mm -hmm. um, and I found the position a little bit more upright. Yeah, I mean, I think that the blur is fantastically light, and it's also very comfortable. It's lots <laughs> of the things. Like it is lots of the things that you'd want an XC bike to be. However, it didn't seem to have the same poise responsiveness for me on the pedals in general as the Trek. Okay. How about time? How about your time lapse? We talked about efficiency, but what about your timed climbs? How does it go? The timed climbs, so this was the fastest technical climber. There and, we go. And I the don't. slowest technical descender. Well, cross you can't do everything. Yeah. It's a cross country. You can't do everything, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I know I can't do everything. That's why I say, bloody hell, I'll just have the bike I actually want. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I yeah, think fair. it's the better all rounder. Yeah, but that does show something. Yeah, fastest technical climber. Oh yeah, and it is, it's loads of grip, especially, you know, there are some bikes that, like the Niner, you have to hit stuff with speed because they don't handle acceleration so well. This thing, you can hit stuff slow and it still has the grip to get up. Pretty impressive. And it's light, so you can accelerate out of the slow corner. Yeah. And it's got three bottles. So think about monster. I'm so high. says everything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the descents. You got this 23 pound bike, you point it downhill, you got some steeper things around here. How's that go? <laughs> I mean, I liked it. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what Mike said to me? He said, I like this thing because it's it's so difficult. You're like, because it's so hard to ride. You're like, it's so much, it's so much harder to ride than the Trek. It's so much harder to ride than the Rocky. It makes me scared. <laughs> yeah. I have to explain myself. Go it's on. the closest to what I think a true down country bike is. A down country bike is just a cross country bike with a wider handlebar and a longer drop seat post. It's just a sketchy. So here, here's the thing with that bike. I enjoy being close to the edge and the bike maybe moving a little bit and maybe I don't want the most traction. I've said that before to you, Kaz. And that makes riding more fun. And I know that I'm gonna descend faster on the Niner or the, the Top Fuel or whatever, but I don't care. Like the Santa Cruz is more fun. <laughs> you can't argue with that. I mean, one thing I did like about the Santa Cruz is not only does it have a long insertion depth? It also, Santa Cruz have got the common sense, unlike Canyon, to spec a seat post with long drop. Yeah. So it, yes, it is an XC, quite XC bike that you, know, that you could race, but also it's not that much of an intimidating prospect. In fact, I would say the Santa Cruz feels like a far better execution of more kind of conservative XC inspired geometry than yeah. the Canyon. We're riding a medium Canyon because- It has a five foot long seat tube. A five foot long seat tube and the, the effective top tube you pretty much measure it in miles. Yeah. It's a long way. I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier, but you said this was the fastest climber, but also the slowest descender. Yeah, in my hands, somebody that is used to longer travel, more comfortable bikes, I'm not used to living by the seat of my pants like Levy. Just hanging on. Just <laughs> hanging on. You know, this, I couldn't quite get it, you know, get it going as quick as some of the other bikes. It was similarly paced as the Canyon. The Canyon just picked it by around half a second, but neither bike was going all that fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neither the Canyon or the Santa Cruz really excel on this sort of rooty, rocky terrain. I mean, it, it is appropriate terrain. It's nothing that's above their heads, but when you do start going fast on that stuff, it's rough and it's been wet and it's super slippery. And yeah, I think both of those bikes, definitely you are closer to the edge than you are on some of the others. Let's move into the components a little bit. Can I talk about that longer dropper post as being an appropriate spec choice? 
Anything else that stands out on this? I think there are some things that I personally didn't like, that I'm sure there'll be people who will be saying that I've got it all wrong, but like the 175 mil cranks, the small What's the matter brakes, with 175 mil cranks? It's a cross country XC. But the thing that's wrong with 175 mil cranks, for Henry, is... for me, is because the slacker seat tube and the longer cranks mean that you're sure. just doing more glute recruitment to bring it back into the Yeah, scope. but you're handicapped. I am. Yeah. But also I think for a lot of other people, it's just not, it's just not as efficient. You feel like you're clawing the cranks back. Yeah. Combined with this doesn't have the eagle expansion, it's just a 52 that back with a 34 in the front. It was 23 pounds. There's no way. Guys. If this bike came spec with a 52 tooth cog, I'd no. be <laughs> all over Sanders. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. It doesn't this weigh anything. This isn't, this isn't the race bike. This is the TR. This it's is pretty the, racy. No, <laughs> exactly, it's pretty yeah. racy. But the reason it's, the TR is that it should have those subtle spec choice differences to make it easier to live with. You know, I will agree with you on one point. You say subtle spec choice differences. You know what wouldn't be subtle? Having some four piston brakes. Mm. It has mm. two piston brakes on it. And in the past, I will admit, I've argued with Kaz over here. I've said two piston is fine. Here we are in Pemberton. It's pretty steep. It's not as fine as the bikes with four pistons. <laughs> you know, yes, there was, there was the same point in every run where I was just like, just like, just making my piece. But I will say though that for how this bike is meant to be ridden, which is definitely more towards the cross country side of things, I don't think they're crazy out of line for a lot of places in the world. I would like to see that reach adjustment on there because they did migrate a bit and you gotta get like a freaking like 0 0.1 mill millimeter Allen key in there to adjust them, which is useless. But what break? Those are the levels, right? Level yeah, breaks? Those are levels, yeah. yeah. So other parts of the spec I really liked were the subtle changes that I think they got right. So it includes a chain guide and a really long job on the seat post, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. Super handy when you're on a little travel steep bike in a place with gnarly trails, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. The one thing that I didn't like though is it's a hydraulic reverb with the thumb paddle. Mm -hmm. It's been super cold here and that thumb paddle is just saying, nah, I'm not really gonna come back. You would push it and it would go, mm, this is about how fast it would come back as which is kind of a bummer. But overall, the post work just fine. We talked about the rear of the bike a bit, has good grip, but let's talk about that fork. That's a Fox 34, I think it's got the Fit 4 damper. Mm -hmm. It's a new one, it's got some updates for this year. Yes. How'd you find that? I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I think both the 34, both in Stepcast and not, as well as the Sid, for these kind of steeper cross-country bikes, they really do open up its capabilities. And I was really impressed by both forks. I thought yeah. they were great. Yeah, and I would also agree with you, Henry. I think the Fit4 is probably the right damper for this bike. It has the three position switch on the top uh, for people that want to firm up their fork for a long climb if you need to. And obviously the grip damper doesn't offer that. So this makes sense, yeah. All right, let's get into some pricing and some builds. The bike we have here costs 9,449 US dollars. And it's not actually the top of the line spec. There's one that goes for $11,000 that has even more fancy things on it. But let's talk about what we might get with our own money, or maybe if we had a little bit more money than we normally would. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pretend I have some money for a minute. I think yeah. the one that makes sense to me is the XT spec C frame model. Now it's a little bit heavier. It's about 26 and a half pounds or so. But the spec just makes sense. Performance, Fox suspension, uh, level brakes, all sorts of stuff that just works. And then we should also mention actually Santa Cruz offers carbon wheel upgrades. So you could save some money, get the $4,600 bike. And if you wanted to spend on carbon wheels where it might make a difference, you know. Henry, what's good about the blur? I really like simply how light it was and the grip. It was a really comfortable place to be. Its grip was consistent and responded well to accelerations. It responded well to slower speeds. It kind of did it. Okay, that means we have to talk about the negatives. And I think the big one for me here is more of a philosophical one about the entire bike. You know, if you are looking for all out capability from your short travel bike, this blurb probably isn't it. This is really a cross country bike. Actually, if you go to Santa Cruz website, I think they say it's actually not a down country bike. Specifically, they say that, even though it's here in our down country test. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's you are closer to the edge on this bike. So if you're a rider who likes to frequent challenging terrain, you like to push yourself technically, um, this probably isn't the bike for you.
speaking of who is the bike for, who is it for? Who's the ideal rider for the blur? I sound like the ideal rider is me, yeah, <laughs> to be honest with you. You loved it. Hey, every yeah. time you were like, this is just the right amount of danger pedaling <laughs> up the hill. <laughs> that actually is a really good way to put it, Henry, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, this is a bike for somebody who wants to cover a ton of ground. You value a bike that sort of lights a fire under your ass. You want to go climbing, you enjoy it, you want to cover a lot of ground, like I said. But maybe you also aren't all about the downs. You know, you, you're not timing yourself on the downs. Your KOMs come from the climbs, not the descents. Imagine that, Kaz. Yeah, it's something different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for you, not for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I get both. Yeah. I think for me, the place, the Santa Cruz, would really shine would actually be as almost like an all day like marathon bike. Yeah. It's so comfortable, it's light enough. It's a bit more security than an all out cross country rig, but still it doesn't gain too much weight compared to an XC rig, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good marathon yeah. bike. There you have it. That's the Santa Cruz Blur TR. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the field test content and we'll see you soon.